We're starting to see signs that Canadian carriers are starting to shut down their 3G networks. We've seen Rogers give some pretty clear cut signs with the discontinuation of Rogers prepaid in favor of their prepaid brand, Chad R. And I'm guessing the reason they did that was to uh, make it easier for them because Rogers prepaid did not support voice over LTE and neither does Chad R. So they're probably gonna add voice over LTE support to Chad R. So they don't have to do it for two separate carriers and just one separate NVNO brand that has voice over LTE. And while writing this script for this video, Rogers just announced that they will be discontinuing 3G on July 31st, 2025. Now Rogers is the only carrier that's given that clear cut sign that says that we will shut down 3G, but what about other carriers? Well, Bell hasn't really put anything out regarding 3G, but TELUS has started tacking on a 3G price increase for anyone who dares to use the 3G network in 2024. Okay, so I'm genuinely confused about this because TELUS puts this as a pay-per-use charge of $3 for anyone who doesn't have a voice over LTE compatible device, but some people on Reddit have gotten that notification with a voice over LTE compatible device. And if they're not going off device compatibility, why? Because there's a lot of places that Bell just doesn't have LTE or 5G coverage because they haven't really deployed 600 megahertz. It's stupid because they still have areas that don't have LTE or 5G coverage, but they're still charging the price increase. So why not just upgrade those areas and start upgrading people's phones that are on postpaid because you're only charging this on postpaid. And I don't want to really have it sound like the statement's in vain, but if you have like a 3G capable device that you're using as your main device, you've probably already paid it off. So you're probably better off using prepaid anyways because you can get cheaper plans. And TELUS is taking a more unique approach to it too because I've never seen any other carrier in any other country that shut down 3G do this before. So it just seems like a very cynical cash grab by Canadian carriers. And a cash grab at that, that will only affect elderly customers that don't know any better. But anyways, today I wanna to take one last test drive of every 3G network in Canada. So as for testing out Rogers today, I'm gonna to be using my iPhone 4S that's connected to Rogers. The only band that Rogers has left for 3G is 850 megahertz, so this should be fine for taking advantage of that network. Although I have seen that the pings are a lot higher than they are while testing 3G on my iPhone 4S rather than my iPhone 6 on Rogers, so... But there's little to no speed disparity and I've already done a little bit of testing just to make sure of that. For Bell, I'm gonna be using this iPhone 4 on uh, PC Mobile. Oh, come on. Yep, PC Mobile because... PC Mobile runs on Bell and will not charge me a 3G price increase if I dare to use the 3G network. So PC Mobile on the iPhone 4 it is. And Bell uses 850 megahertz and 1900 megahertz, both supported by the iPhone 4. Now as for freedom, it was kind of hard to find a device that was like 3G compatible, but the 3G AWS 3 band that Freedom uses. So for this, I just had to use an iPhone 6 and uh, put it down to 3G manually. So yeah, I'm just using a, my Fizz mobile SIM in this iPhone 6 and just putting it down to 3G manually, which kind of seems like cheating, but like I can't find a device that's 3G compatible on Freedom, except the iPhone 4S technically, but this is locked to Rogers, so I can't really use it. And since Bell and TELUS use the same network basically, I don't need to buy like a TELUS or TELUS NVNO SIM. So yeah, I'm just gonna be using PC Mobile and that, that'll give you an idea for Okay, I'm gonna take an initial speed test on all three networks. Now, as you can see here, Bell is sucking absolute ass, which is genuinely not surprising seeing the state of their network today, but they do have the higher bands, so I don't know why Rogers got a higher speed. Ignore the pings for this, by the way. Like, the pings should be higher if they were on a modern device, but I'm not using modern devices for this. Rogers got second place. Uh, 
and Fizz got first place, or Freedom, because they use 2100 MHz uh, 3G, so they have the highest band of 3G, which is still not fast, but it's fast enough. I'm gonna try my own website now. It took like four seconds. Now I'm testing uh, Rogers. Come on. God damn it. Okay, so I'm gonna give that like three seconds because I only got it like the first second. Come on. Anyways, I'm also gonna try my own website out on here. Three, two, one. I'm gonna give it a head start in here. It's like three, four seconds. Four on PC mobile. I'm gonna give that a head start and go here. That was basically okay. So I'm gonna start this and go here. That took about four or five seconds. Okay, these are the types of speeds that I'm getting downtown Kingston. See, Rogers is now the slowest on the download test. Oh, never mind. Bell is. And uh, Freedom is doing remarkably well. Glad I decided to get a test because this phone just freaking died on me. 12 year old battery hype. Seems like Freedom Mobile is faring the best against uh, Bell and Rogers, so. Yeah, I'm not even surprised by this because the band is better that they're using on Freedom. It was victim number two of uh, the minus 10 degree weather we're having in, in uh, Canada right now, so. Just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna do some speed tests on my iPhone 14 with a decent battery on LTE. Here's the speeds of uh, LTE on Freedom. I'm also going to uh, test 5G on Rogers in this area. This is a 5G test on Rogers. is freedom but that's probably because the network is more congested 104 up and seven down so yeah much better than 3g so in conclusion am i gonna miss 3g eh, not really it was good for the time and i have a lot of memories with it like when i was a kid using my own phone always going over the data limit uh on it and uh getting extra charges i remember that and uh yeah sure th having 3g was fun and having access to using 3g devices just for nostalgia was fun as well but all good things must come to an end and honestly when 3g gets shut down 5G networks will get better and faster and more long range since they can use the 3G spectrum for uh, 5G. So I can't wait for that to happen. Honestly, it was a long time coming and I really think uh, the 3G network should have been shut down sooner. So I'm going to miss it, although I'm not really going to miss it in the way that I use it. I don't use it, so it's fine. And my daily life will get better because of this because of faster 5g networks so i'm not really gonna miss it but anyways thank you guys for watching leave a comment down below subscribe and give me a like if you liked it dislike if you disliked it uh but anyways thank you guys for watching comment like subscribe and i'll see you guys later bye